Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Melanie Dizon. I'm the Director of Education and Research at the Davis Finney Foundation. And today I am here with Dr. Michelle Fullard. How are you doing, Dr. Fullard? I am good. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about who you are and where you work? So I am an assistant professor of neurology uh, at the University of Colorado, and I'm a subspecialist in movement disorders. So I see a lot of patients with Parkinson's. Great. So you have a full clinical practice and as, as well as being part of a sort of a research. Right. Right. Yeah. Great. So you submitted an application last year for our grant cycle. And out of the 69 some applications that we got, we chose yours to fund. We're really excited about it. would love to hear a little bit about what brought you to applying for that specific program, you know, what have you learned over the years that made you say we really need to do this work? And then what exactly is it and what do you hope to to learn over the course of the next couple of years? Sure. Um, so one of my main interests is gender differences in Parkinson's disease, um, you know, from clinical symptoms to the kind of care that people uh, that men and women get with Parkinson's. Um, we started looking at the referral patterns for DBS at the University of Colorado last year with one of our fellows, Lisa Duell, and then um, with Dr. Drew Kern as well. And we found that women were much less likely to be referred for DBS and uh, much less likely to undergo surgery as well. And so I just really wanted to look into why that was happening. Um, and that's what really led to this project. Um, so looking deeper at our data, we found that even once women were approved for surgery, they were much more likely to decline than men. Um, so even when they're great candidates. Um, and then we looked at uh, nationwide data too, just to see if this was true across the US. And we found that about 30% or less of surgeries for DBS were done for women, um, which we know uh, Parkinson's is more um, common in men, but still this discrepancy is not really accounted for by that difference. Um, so this project is really aimed at understanding why women are less likely to undergo DBS surgery. Um, so over the first year, we plan to invite men and women um, to undergo interviews uh, where we really just talk about the DBS process. So what was it like for you? Uh, what information is important for you to make that decision? And did you get that information? Um, and to really understand, you know, what barriers are present, um, especially for women. But, you know, we're um, looking at for men, too. And then with that uh, information, uh, we plan to implement a pilot program. And so this will involve um, a few different things. Uh, one is a decision aid. And so we found from other elective surgeries like uh, total knee replacement surgery, women are less likely to undergo that surgery as well, even though they're more likely to have um, osteoarthritis of the knee. Um, and from uh, data for total knee replacement, we found that women are less likely to get information from their primary care doctor, from uh, even the surgeons about the surgery itself. And so just didn't feel as ready to make the decision. Um, and then it looked like there were some social factors as well. So in general, women are more likely to be caregivers, more worried about being a burden on others. So we wanna see if some of those factors also transfer to Parkinson's. Um, and then a decision aid is one way to at least provide all the pertinent information uh, to men and women who are considering uh, DBS surgery. And then um, we'll tailor it to, uh, you know, if we find that women really want this kind of information, maybe more so than men, um, we can tailor parts of it to what uh, women may need uh, to make the decision. Um, and we're hoping with that decision aid, you know, women will just feel more empowered to make that decision, feel like they have all the information that they need. Um, and hopefully we'll see increased use um, of DBS for women. Uh, one other thing that we've heard from a lot of our patients uh, is that they would really like to get the patient perspective. So, you know, we can tell them all about DBS, the potential complications, potential benefit, but, um, you know, what is it really like to undergo the surgery? What is it like to undergo all the programming afterwards? So we plan to implement an ambassador program. So we'll have volunteers uh, of patients who've undergone DBS, so men and women, uh, and then we'll try to match people who are undergoing the evaluation process 
with one of these ambassadors. So it's a younger woman who's still employed will hopefully find someone in similar situations. They can really talk about, you know, what was it like to take off time from work? You know, how was it coming back to work? Um, and we're hoping getting that patient perspective will really help with the decision-making process as well. Nice. Did you learn anything um, in your pre-work about whether one of the barriers or one of the reasons why less women are given the information is because women are less likely to ask for it versus versus men or was it just in all e all things being equal the doctor just didn't tell the woman so at least from total knee replacement so not as much work has been done in parkinson's it seems like there is an implicit bias so something that you know the doctors aren't aware of patients aren't aware of women um, just aren't given as much information uh, are less likely to be even told that surgery is an option and then you know some of the data has suggested that women also want more information they want to be more involved in the decision whereas men in general might be more likely to trust the uh, doctor's decision so if they say surgery would be good for you they're more likely to go with it women are more likely to want to uh, want more information and to talk with more family and friends before making that decision mm -hmm. so you said that you're going to be talking part of your interviews are going to be people who've had DBS. Mm -hmm. uh, will, will those interviews also include people that were given all the information about DBS and chose not to do it? Exactly. So that's one of the key populations we really want to study. So for women and men who have undergone the evaluation process, we've told them, you know, you're a great candidate. We think this would be a great surgery for you. But then they decide not to undergo the surgery. We really want to understand why that is. Um, you know, was it because they are a caregiver and they didn't feel like they could take that time off? Um, or was it uh, concern about risks? And if that's the case, you know, is it, did they have all the information or was there some misperception about risk that we could have provided more information about? Mm -hmm. Great. Well, we're really excited to find out the results from this uh, DBS and whether or not they should get it is a question we get every day. So, uh, we're really excited and, and so grateful to you for uh, applying for this program. And we look forward to hearing more about it as you uh, get through your interviews. All right, well, thank you. We're very excited as well. Thank you so much.